What's going on everybody? So this video is ending a three part series of the three products that I made using just one gallon of raw milk. There are many other things that I'm sure you could make using a gallon of raw milk, but I, I chose to make these three to show you. So if you would like to see how to take a gallon of raw milk and get to where we are right now, then I recommend you see my previous video where I made cheese using raw milk cheese curds. Um, but if you just want to get into, you already have the way and you want to see how I did it, then this video is for you. So let's get into it. Hey, good morning, everybody. So we're going to go ahead and proceed to the next and final cheese product. And I'll explain a little bit about it when we get to the end. But the next step is I need to strain the cheese, the, the low amount of cheese because that actually made it through the cheesecloth out. So I got double wrapped paper towels. I have my strainer suspended on whatever you can find me. It was a, a wooden spoon and my knife, knife sharpener. So let's see how this works. I'm just going to go real slow. I'm going to let what's in there go ahead and drain out a little bit because I know once that cheese clumps over, it might get a little interesting. So we'll go ahead and let that finish draining out off camera and then we'll come to the next step. All right, so I've put the whey into the pot, as you saw, and I put it on medium-high heat. I've actually been going since nine o'clock this morning. It's three and a half hours later. This is why I don't do it often. What we're doing here is weren't caramelizing the whey. And let me show you what I mean. So earlier it was all clear, but now some of the sugars are starting to crystallize um, and the caramelization process is beginning. So when we get to the next step, I'm not going to bore you with the time here. When we get to the next step, we'll come back. I'll see you then. All right, so just doing a quick update. It's now 2.36. One of the things that you do when you're kind of stirring this, as you can see, I'm getting a lot lower now, is see if you can hear it. You can hear some of the grinding as I'm getting the crystallization off the bottom of the pan. And uh, that, that, that's which I come through and every time I just make sure it's at least as clear as I can get it, get the bottom as clear as I can go. Um, and then as you can kind of see, we started up roughly about right here. Let me pull it out of there. But you can kind of see the line where we started and now we're all the way down here. Right, and we're back and we're getting close to where we're going to add the cream. So let me uh, show you. Right now, you can, as I stir it, you know, it's st not necessarily closing completely like it was when it was more liquid. We're definitely reaching a lot more solid. So since it's reaching this point, although I do want it to continue caramelizing, uh, I want it to brown just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it down just slightly. You notice it's now 430. We started at nine. Again, this is right why I don't do it that often. It takes a minute. Um, and also in preparation, uh, what I did was basically take a half gallon container, cut it in half. It's currently drying um, because what we're going to do is once it gets a little bit closer to actually pouring it in the container, I'm going to butter it and and then uh, we'll pour it in and then it has to stay overnight. So I should hopefully be able to get this video out to you guys for Friday. All right, what's up, everybody? So we're going to move on to the next step. As you can see, it's almost five o'clock. I've now turned it down to uh, medium low heat, almost just low heat period. I'm going to move you in and have you watch the next few steps so you can see it's definitely starting to brown now and it's uh, no longer really uh it's, it's re almost no liquid form so it's now time to add the heavy cream for one cup correction for one gallon of one second let me make sure i do this if you if since i got this from one gallon you use one cup so uh, the kind of, I'm using California Real Milk Heavy Cream. I just like the fat content. It's 30% 30, 30 
uh, saturated fat, so it has a higher fat content. So we're gonna just dump that in and kind of wipe up my mess here on the uh, container here. All right, and I'm gonna put this away. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back up to um, me medium low now. So I put it up to number four. And we're just gonna go ahead and I, right now I just wanna kinda get it, get everything mixed, get the heavy cream mixed in there really well. Maybe even try to pull stuff from the top. And then once this is all sort of mixed in pretty well, then we just start the waiting game again. Um, except now it's going to start going just a little bit faster. So I'm going to go ahead and in the meantime, while off camera, I'm going to go ahead and put butter in the cut half gallon container so that it's ready. Because once this thing starts getting towards the end, basically it, you need, it requires your 100% attention all the way up into this time. I would go away for 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes, come by and stir, uh, and, and then just keep rinse and repeat. Um, but as you start getting closer to the end, you need to just basically be standing over it and completely stirring it nonstop. So I will see you when we get to that point. All right, so I wanted to show you this. It's really starting to heat up down there. So again, like I said, it's starting to get a little bit, it requires a little bit more attention. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back down to three now. And we're just going to keep spinning it. I know I told you I'd get to bring it to the very end, but I decided to go ahead and put it to 2.5 on the temperature. And you can see it's almost 540. Um, and now we are definitely getting a nice brown color. And at this point, I'm just really kind of wanting to slow roast it, slow boil it, simmer it down to the end. Um, and I'm almost, with this consistency, I'm almost ready to go ahead and uh, put it in. I have already buttered my uh, container. So, yeah, it shouldn't be much longer. Um, and then I will go ahead and uh, bring you no kidding on the last step. We are ready to go ahead and put it in the container. Now, let me just give you a feel for, number one, how dark it is. It's definitely a very dark brown now. Um, I think uh, it's kind of hard to really get a feel for it. I mean, definitely on your first time, you're just going to have to feel it um, on, you know, when do you think it's done. On other YouTube videos that I've seen, they say sometimes it's going to come out either like a creamier style to where you can just spread it real easily or it's going to be a little bit harder. But you never know until, um, correction, it'll be harder to where you have to cut it and put it on your bread or whatever you want to put it on. Um, but you can see it's just really, it's really not uh, moving too much as I kind of put it up. It's it's almost holding its shape pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and call that a wrap and we will put it in the container. I'll go ahead and put it in the container and sh show you from there on what it looks like. All right, so I got it all in there. You can see like it wasn't wanting to go ahead and take the form very easily. So I'm going to go ahead and push all this down so it looks, cons at least so it lays consistent. I think it will eventually kind of level out on its own, but I just want to kind of help and assist and see the butter around the edge doing its part. Feeling a little hot on the hands, but not too bad. Probably because I turned it down to such a low heat just prior to it finishing. But looks like it's only coming up maybe an inch in here, so it's not <laughs> it's not making too much. But um, okay, so I am going to put this into the refrigerator overnight and then we'll try it in the morning prior to me going fishing. See you then. Good morning, everybody. Well, it is six in the morning. I'm getting ready to head out fishing here shortly. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. So I picked it up. I can already tell we got it's It's firmed up. So it doesn't appear at least right now that it's going to be cream cheese. Let's just go ahead and open it up. As long as I did the butter and everything correctly, it should come off. There we go. 
Take a little chunk here. Well, this is different and it's very sweet. Mm. So it's different than it's different than anything uh, any other cheese that you have. It's it's really sweet. Let me see here. I don't know if that part was just part that had some of the butter. Let's cut just a little bit. All right, so this does seem like how I did it. It will spread a little bit. So uh, the recommended way I've seen to eat it this is basically on toast with raspberry jam. Uh, yeah, so let me take a second and explain to you what this is and uh, why I made it. What's up, everybody? So that's three things that I made with just one gallon of raw milk. See, there's a lot of utility in using raw milk, but, you know, that, we'll leave that. We'll end that part of the discussion. But, yeah, so I first tried this cheese when I was visiting Norway about uh, two years ago. And the cool thing is, is in, kind of uh, in memory of my grandmother, that um, about a year ago, she was telling me about the, how the only thing that she remembered from her grandmother who came over uh, to the United States from Norway was this brown cheese she had. I was like, oh, you know what? I had some of that cheese. And so I, when I went home after visiting her, my grandma, I went ahead and I tried uh, to see, well, how would you go about making that cheese? That'd be cool to make it for my grandmother. Um, but uh, um, I went home and I realized, oh, it's just heating up whey. And I was already making cheese and butter with raw milk. I was like, now I finally have a use for it. I guess back in the day, they um, they would just basically put it on top of a wood a wood burning stove and just let it go all day. And then they would they would add some cream later and they would you know produce this cheese. Um, but uh, yeah, I, th I thought that was some pretty cool history in my own personal family history on this cheese. I personally like it making it with goat cheese. I only had the dairy, uh, the cow, heavy cream available. If I had the other, I would have used it. I think when you make it with the goat cheese, it tends to be a little bit more hard, or I just did something different again. This is only the third time that I made it, um, but uh, I, I will do it again in the future, but I just don't do it so often because it does, as you see, take so much time. But anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good day.